Okay, we're here for the grant management seminar. Thank you. Thank you very much. What we're going to learn today is about the Rotary Foundation and the areas of focus. The District Rotary Foundation Committee, that's the group that puts on these things. Uh, the Magic Dollars, which we call District Designated Funds. You'll also hear them called DDF. Uh, we'll talk about what makes a successful grant project. We'll talk about the Rotary grants that are available to you and the District 6400 grant that is available to you. We'll talk about grant stewardship, the qualifications your club must have in order to participate in a Rotary grant, and the all-important memorandum of understanding, which you will see in the inside covers of your Duotang uh, booklet and also attached as the last pages of your booklet. Let's start with the Rotary Foundation. Once upon a time, the Rotary Foundation. For me, the most interesting slide or image in that presentation was where it had across the top, your dedication helps Rotary tell its stories. Why was that interesting? Who noticed? In that photograph were a group of Rotarians on a project. They were all from District 6400. Noel Jackson, Roberto was there, and uh, many others. So really cool that we get our district uh, highlighted in a Rotary International film about the foundation. I like this film because it makes a connection between the foundation where we give the money and the good humanitarian works we do, how we use the money. And the grant, uh, this grant management seminar is about how to use the money with a little bit of knowledge about where the money comes from. If it doesn't go in, it can't go out. Rotary International has six areas of focus. When you do a global grant, those are the big ones, it has to be in one of those six areas of focus. The six areas of focus are exactly what you would make up if someone said, hey, pick six areas of focus that you want your good works to, to impact. Uh, there's, um, I can't read my thing over there. Oh. There's promoting peace, peace and conflict resolution, fighting disease, providing clean water, sanitation, and hygiene. There's saving mothers and children, maternal health and child care, supporting education, and growing local economies. Now, this is kind of two years ago areas of focus. There has been a lot of debate in the Rotary Foundation about the environment. Some people wanted the environment to be an area of focus. Instead, all but one of the areas of focus have new parts of it that include a green leaf, that's how you identify it, or a sustainability measure. 
All of them except for basic education and literacy. Don't know why. But it's kind of interesting because peace and conflict resolution, how does that impact the environment? Or how does the environment impact peace and conflict resolution? It's a beautiful idea. When you have environmental uh, issues, often it's around forests or water. There are competing needs. There are recreational needs and there are farming needs. These people are at odds with each other. I was called once by friends of mine on campus at the University of Windsor. They were having a conference on the state of Lake Erie. It's a conference they hold together with uh, Ohio State University and it switches back and forth. And they asked me to bring a group of Rotarians to the conference to hear what their issues were and to give some feedback. Uh, everyone in the conference wanted this. And I thought, why are they calling Rotary? These are scientists, they're biologists, they're environmental scientists and so on. What do they know about Rotary that I don't know? And they said, well, we know that Rotarians focus on peace and conflict resolution. There are conflicts here that we need to resolve and find ways around. We know that Rotarians can marshal resources, get people involved in environmental projects and any kind of projects. We want to hear how you do this and how you manage and if there's a role for Rotary uh, inside environmental issues. So it's a real thing. It works. I was still, still stunned to this day that biology friends of mine knew about the power of Rotary. It's not just a story amongst Rotary Clubs. In addition to the six areas of focus, we can't forget about our corporate mission to rid the world of polio. Uh, there is good news and bad news these days. The good news is that there are no longer three endemic countries. There are just two. And Africa will be declared polio free as a continent uh, this year or coming up this year sometimes. The bad news is that the number of polio cases from wild polio virus has increased in, uh, in uh, Pakistan and in Afghanistan. There are some reasons why that, that we know about and have been corrected and so we hope that things will go forward and we'll get to that last polio case. Now it's time for a pop quiz. I'll read it to you. In the South African province of KwaZulu-Natal, adult literacy is high and HIV AIDS is widespread. Several Rotary Clubs have partnered with the non-governmental organization Operation Upgrade to teach adults literacy, numeracy, and practical life skills. Through lessons in Zulu literacy, English literacy, and numeracy, the students also learn skills such as opening a bank account, writing and sending a letter, managing finances, and developing a small business. The program includes information and supplemental projects related to HIV AIDS and other health issues nutrition, food security, and other community development projects. So the question is, this Rotary project, where does it fit? What is the area of focus? I've given you four choices, so I've eliminated two. Community economic development, disease prevention and cure, maternal and child health, or basic education and literacy. So what do you think? Basic education and literacy? Well, you didn't pick up on HIV AIDS and health? Can we say all? Can we say? They kind of all do a little bit. Yeah, that's what makes it a good question. They kind of all do. When you're doing a grant, a global grant application, you have to pick a, an area of focus. And it's always a good idea to pick one area of focus, the most dominant area of focus. So uh, this, the answer is basic education and literacy. And if you go through it, you see everywhere, adult illiteracy is high. Teach adults literacy, numeracy, which is mathematical literacy, and practical life skills, Zulu literacy, English literacy. So literacy is a dominant theme which feeds all the other ones. So that would be the best answer, not that the other ones are wrong. The District Rotary Foundation Committee. So these are the people that control all things to do with the Rotary Foundation as far as District 6400 is concerned. It's a pretty big org chart. You can't read the names, but uh, if we focus in the, in the middle top, you'll see my name. I'm the chair of this committee. It's a three-year position. Then across the bottom, there's the fundraising chair, Sue Goldson. The polio chair, David Carpenter. The stewardship chair, Roberto, who's here. 
the Grants Overview Chair, Russ Jones, that's why he's here, and all the blue people are the voting members. The rest are there for consulting, for doing work, for uh, asking questions and helping us move forward. But all the policies and the expenditure of money is controlled by the five voting members, three of which are here tonight. So be nice to us if you want money in the future. <laughs> I want to mention uh, Janet Kelly, who is also here. She's the chair of the vocational training team. The people in this red block over here are the ones that you want to know about. They have to do with the grants. So over in the far my right is Roberto Sanchez, stewardship chair. He's the one that will be after you if you aren't doing proper management of your grants or proper reporting of your grants. Uh, Russ Jones, who's here, he is responsible for all of the grant structures, including responsibility for global grants. Bill Jasmine, who's not here tonight, is responsible for the district community grants. And uh, Colleen Mitchell, responsible for Global Scholars. And Janet Kelly, responsible for vocational training teams. District Designated Funds, DDF. Remember that. We always say DDF, we're talking about District Designated Funds. In the yellow box on the side, you will see that three years ago, or two and a half years ago, uh, my year as governor, we raised a total of over uh, $331,000. By raised, I mean that Rotarians like yourselves have given money to the annual programs fund of the Rotary Foundation to a total of $331,000. That's three years ago. That money sits in the bank for three years. Now, uh, the three years starts 2020, 2021, uh, Noel Jackson's year as governor or as I like to say, the year that we will be up to Noel Good. <laughs> I love that enthusiastic laughter. <laughs> You're learning. Do not make fun of Captain Rotary. Do not make fun of Captain Rotary. <laughs> so three years now, next year, we get half of that money back. That money is called District Designated Funds, so that's the DDF. So how much we gave three years ago determines how much we have this year to spend on grants. That DDF money, that special pot of money, has to be split into two pieces. At least half of it, it could be more, but at least half of it has to go to global grant projects. We pick exactly half to go to the global grants. The other half goes to the district uh, community grant pot. We'll learn the difference between global grants and district community grants uh, as the session goes on. I made them different colors so you can watch at the top. Oh, one more thing. <laughs> uh, this is an estimate of how much we have, this $165,000, because there is money we earn from endowed funds that are been, money that's been donated on behalf of District 6400. There are four or five of these endowed funds. And there's money that rolls over from the previous year that's been unspent. All of the money in the district part that's unspent goes to the global part the next year. So most of the money moves up the global ladder if it's not spent. So we have more than that available to us this year. Yes? But in that 331000 when it was raised three years ago, yeah. that's just out of our district. That's from our district, yeah. Our yeah. yeah. Yep. Is there sometimes money left over or it carries up to the following? Any money that's left over of district designated funds, so the question is what happens to the money that's not spent? It's always ours. Right. So money that we have allocated to the global fund last year, whatever is not spent, goes to the global fund next year. Yeah. Money that was in the district pot last year goes forward, but it goes to the global pot the next year. Okay. So if you don't spend the money on the district projects, the small projects that we do, uh, it rolls over to the global side the year after. It only goes global. There are, are once in a while an opportunity to move money from the global back down to the district community pot. Uh, we, this year is an example, last year was an example, but it's not a, uh, an ongoing thing. Normally it goes up to the global, but we never lose the money, it's our money. Uh, and the use of this money is determined by those five voting members. So again, that's me for the purposes of bribes, and I shouldn't say that. We can't be bribed. We can't be bribed. Four-way test. 
uh, myself, Sue Goldson, uh, David Carpenter, Roberto Sanchez, and Russ Jones. So that we're the ones that vote. No money is given out by me or any individual. All the money that's allocated to you for grants is decided by this committee of five and voted. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the district community grants. Rotary says uh, these funds pay for scholarships, travel, projects that all align with our mission to help Rotarians contribute to world understanding, goodwill, and peace by improving people's health, supporting education, and alleviating poverty. That's what Rotary International allows. Here's what we do. We use it to support local or international projects and these things called district community grants. We use it to fund grant management seminars. So there's some small expenses for doing these things. Very small, I, I don't even, the, the, we had to pay for the book, the books, the books, yeah. So that's about it. Uh, they may be used for travel for Rotarians to go to project fairs. We have done this every once in a while, but not very often. If a club is trying to uh, start a global project in some other country and they're looking for a partner, they have a good idea what they want to do, uh, we may fund them to a small amount of money to help them get to these project fairs that take place in India and Africa uh, almost on an annual basis. So you can go there and meet people and talk about who might be a partner, learn about their projects. And uh, these district community grants that we're talking about where this money comes from, it's important to know that you can do these grants without having to have a Rotary Club partner where the grant work is taking place. So it's a little easier to use the grant money. This year, 2019-2020, we use these grants to fund 35 district community grants. Be proud of yourself, Super District 6400. We have 52 clubs. We funded 35 projects. 29 were single club projects. Six were collaborative club projects. Two are from two to four clubs involved in a project. And we have administrative expenses of about $1,200. Uh, some, as we said, printing this booklet, but we also buy things like ShareFile, which you hear about, a district resource for storing documents from these grants. The total value of all of these projects was $166,500. That's big. 84,000 of it came from the district designated funds last year, and the rest was from your club matching or from other cash donations towards the project. So that's a big impact on the local and international communities. We always have some that are done in international communities, but most are done in the local communities. Now the little box changed color, so you know I'm not talking about district grants, but about the global grants. Uh, global grants, every year our district sets aside $15,000 for what we call the district governor's vocational training team. The district governor decides the purpose and the place for the vocational training team. Then Janet uh, takes over, uh, advertises interviews for the committee chair, interviews for the team members, and helps write the grant uh, application. So watch out for that. Is it, this is done for John's year, right? Yes. And you're, and, and you're already working on Noel's year. Yeah. And Aruna's. And Aruna's year. Yeah, wow. <laughs> and we set aside $15,000 for what uh, we sometimes call the district's or the district governor's global scholar. So every year we have a global scholar. No, uh, Russ will talk more about the VTT and the global scholar grants a little bit later on, but the money is there. And in, in the news and notes of March, you'll see an advertisement for you to look for candidates to get this scholarship. This scholarship is worth $30,000, American dollars. It's a big scholarship. Rotary, I've heard, is the world's largest provider of scholarships. And this is one of them. We don't think about that as Rotarians, but it's true. About 20% we put towards the polio campaign. Now we wait until the end of the year to make sure that we have 20% of that money available, that we haven't given it out to clubs doing global grants. So far, ever since this program has started, we have met our 20% commitment. When polio is over, if we continue, we will get special recognition as a district for having been uh, a key part of eradicating polio from the world. So far, every year, we've made our 20% commitment. What are we doing in global grants? 
On January the 15th, 2020, the five voting members got together and approved $67,500 in DDF support for global grants. Five global grant applications that were funded through the district and two for which we are partners. For example, $5,000 to the Guatemala Literacy Project. We have 11 global grant applications in draft form. People are working on them. They aren't ready to be submitted, but they're started and they're going to be going forward at some time in the next year, year and a half. There are two global grants waiting final authorization, which means somebody hasn't approved the funds yet. And sometimes it takes time. It's very fast in our district to get it normally, uh, but it's sometimes very hard to get the authorizations from the international partners. There is one grant that's waiting approval, so it's completely submitted and is being looked at by the Rotary Foundation staff. Uh, there are 25 projects that have been funded and are ongoing. And since uh, 2010, our district has been involved in 70 completed global grant projects. This is phenomenal. We sometimes forget about how great this is because this is us. And if we're doing it, it can't be any big deal. How hard can it be if I'm doing it? Or as my mother once told me, I used to be impressed by PhDs until you got one. <laughs> <laughs> but if you look outside the world and you look to other districts, I've talked to district governors at the International Assembly where they were bragging about, wow, and we got a global grant last year. And I'm thinking, good for you. I'm so happy that you're starting in the process. But wow, well, want me to talk about what happens in District 6400 and other very active districts. We're obviously not the only very active district. We're one of them. Global grants, when you apply for a global grant, we will give you at most $10,000 in matching. Uh, if you put in 8,500, we will match 8,500. If you put in 10, we will match 10. If you put in 20, we will match 10. Okay, so that's the limit almost always the limit. If you are involved or supporting a global grant that another district is doing, the most we will give is $5,000 for that. So we participate in other districts' grants and other, district grants, uh, other districts participate in our grants. It goes both ways. But these are the kind of the, the upper limits in almost every situation. How do you get a global grant started or how do we get any of the applications for any of the grants. It's quite simple now and you don't need to wait for the next year's grant application to be available or the next year's grant application reporting form to be available. We have removed all the dates from the grant applications now and so it's up there and it's the same one this year as it is next year and the year after that and the year after that. So you can start now but pay attention because inside there we'll say things like this grant application is due on May 30th of the current rotary year and the report is due by May 30th of the next rotary year. And so you just have to ask yourself what rotary year is this and then you should be fine. So you uh, go to rotary6400.org, mouse over the foundation tab, select TRF, the Rotary Foundation, and District 6400 grant applications and they're all there. So. There's our District 6400. I always just Google uh, Rotary 6400 and that's the first hit. So I open up that page. I go over to the middle and you'll see the word that says foundation. So I'll just mouse over that word foundation. A drop down menu appears and I pick the second one, Rotary Foundation and District 6400 grants. And that will open up a page that looks like this and they're all there. There's a brief description of what the grant is and then links to the application forms and to the reporting form. So everything is in one spot uh, and it's easy to, to find and there's no change year by year.